The new Offspring album... Yeah. Now I'm not gonna do the whole pissed off music critic shtick like I sometimes do. He's the most favorite nine times out of ten irrational and detrimental music critic. Yeah, he cares some YouTuber fan. Cause this album really isn't awful. There's some good stuff to be found, and I can recommend some tracks. So TLDW, it's a decent offspring record. It leaves a lot to be desired in some tracks, a few of them make me want to tear my hair out, and three or four of them I would say are pretty damn good. It's no ex and the hombre, it's not even as good as Rise and Fall or Raising Grace. But I'm sure this will hit the spot for many people who are fans of this band. Now, time to get in depth. And before I'm brandished as a hater, I love this band. They're probably the first band I ever listened to that ignited my love for punk rock and its many derivatives. I saw them live a few years back and I was set to see them again with Sum 41 before COVID messed all that up. I'm a really big fan of the first five albums, especially the Epitaph and Nemesis stuff. After that, their records get pretty spotty, but their last two albums I liked. Rise and Fall, Raging Grace was pretty good and Days Go By had its moments, even though the opening track totally rips off Rise Against. Then in 2015, they released the single Coming For You, and it was okay. It's catchy and I can see it going down well live, but it's a little too mid-tempo and slogging for me to really get excited for it. It doesn't have the power and energy that this band's best songs have, and it's a little too forgettable in my opinion. Also, the drum intro sounds damn near identical to their song Stuff Is Messed Up a few years prior. And until this album came out, I never felt the need to come back to it in any way. Despite the chorus including an ode to a classic video game character. But by any rate, there should be a new album to come soon. Oh wait. Yeah, ever since this song released, I would sometimes think to myself, Oh yeah, when's that album coming out? I kept seeing interviews with Dexter and Noodle saying that it was coming out eventually, but at a certain point I was getting Chinese democracy vibes. Seriously, these guys have some nerve for making fun of Axel back in the day for that album taking so long. Excuses they used were their vigorous touring schedule, changing labels from Columbia to Concord Records, home of Kenny G. And another reason was the fact that founding member Greg Kay was ousted from the band. Ah, oh, crap, we gotta talk about this now, too. In 2019, Greg Kreisel, known by stage name Greg K, took legal action against the other founding members, Dexter Holland and Kevin Wasserman, known by stage name Noodles, saying that the two unfairly schemed to kick him out of the band without proper compensation of his third of the band's estate. This stems from a verbal agreement in 1986, which I know is not the most legally binding thing of all time, but according to Greg's lawyer, he has over 20 years of partnership income tax returns in his favor. And keep in mind, Greg has been in this band since the very beginning. He was there even before Noodles. Now sure, he's a fairly reserved guy on stage and off. Truth be told, I've never seen him give an interview in all my years of being a fan of this band. But to just throw him out like a piece of trash after 34 years is a real dick move. It wasn't just a hired gun, he was just as much of a member of this band as Dexter and Noodles. And I'll be the first to admit that I have a bit of a hard time understanding all this legal mumbo jumbo, and the case is still up in the air as to whose side will win, but I'll just say this right now. If what Greg is saying is true, then shame on you Dexter and Noodles, shame on you. Just cause you got the power, doesn't mean you got the right. Anyway, for some shows after Greg K's exit, No Doubt's Tony Canal filled in for a little while, until touring rhythm guitarist for over 10 years, Todd Morse was named the new bass player, who also played with his brother Toby Morse in H2O, and Cone from Sum 41 in the band Operation MD. Anyone else remember Operation MD? Just me? Okay. And only a few months ago, I saw the band finally released a new song. It was the title track for the forthcoming album, Let the Bad Times Roll. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, thanks, bye. And I reject this title on principle, since Paul Westerberg already used that title on a masterpiece of a song years ago. And what did they do with that amazing title? COVID should have taken us out, man. The hook is heinous. Dexter is straining his voice to get to that high-pitched rasp that he's known for. That's like his calling card. But it sounds so bad here. Dexter's voice is aged by quite a bit, which is understandable. He's in his mid-50s. But if he can't do it, then don't do it. 
because the end result is painful to listen to. In fact, I had a real visceral reaction to the song, as you can see from this community post I made right after hearing it. And I feel like Bob Rock, who produced, engineered, and mixed this album, was aware of this, so the vocals are kind of buried in the song, and the other instruments really overpower it, which is probably a good thing. That combined with the vocal effects on his voice, he sounds like he's singing underwater. The chorus is catchy and earwormy, but in the worst way possible. I feel like I'm listening to a kid's bopified version of this band, and it's really grating. It feels like another stale and boring take on one of their classic joke songs. But this isn't a joke song. This is supposed to be a political song. No, I'm serious. But it's annoyingly vague. It doesn't take any sides, which some people might like. But to me, that's just annoying and pandering. There's some examples of stuff like that working, sure. But for the most part, it just gets on my nerves. It shows me that you want to make a statement, but you're too afraid of losing some of your audience and getting them pissed off. I honestly have more respect for maniacs like Ted Nugent writing songs about Obama being the Antichrist, because at least you know where he stands. He doesn't care about the backlash he'll definitely receive. And you guys are in a punk band! Well, kinda, it's debatable. Unless you're an idiot like Michael Graves, we know where you stand politically anyway. There's only a few lines that actually give you an idea of what the songs are even about. There's a line about building a wall. Gee, I wonder who that's referring to. But it sang so quick, you hardly have time to notice. And there's also this line, which kinda baffles me. The line about the wall you can argue is dated because that didn't exactly bode well for Trump. Or did it? But alluding to calls for Hillary Clinton to be put in jail in 2021? You missed the boat by about five years, buddy. And remembering this is the same band who wrote songs like Tehran and Kill the President is really sad. But I guess the songs surrounding the chorus and lyrics aren't too bad, but it leaves way too bad of a taste in my mouth to really forgive it. The second single, well, I mean the third single I guess, is We Never Have Sex Anymore. The song apparently has been around in demo form for like 20 years, but they can never finish it for whatever reason. Oh, I wish to live in a timeline where they kept this on the cutting room floor. But to be honest, the track itself is actually pretty cool. I like the jazzier affectations of the song, and I really like the pianos and additional instrumentation. But the lyrics are just moronic and really drag the song down. And honestly, I fucking hate this band's jokey songs to begin with. I liked them when I was a kid, but they've aged about as well as those terrible spoof movies that came out in the early 2000s. And this song could be so much better if they didn't dumb it down with the stupid lyrics. But if you can excuse the words, I guess you have a decent song here. So this album kind of blows so far. But the opening track, This Is Not Utopia, I think is great. And it's by far the best this album has to offer. It's also political and it's kind of vague about it. But unlike the title track, I feel it's a more scathing critique of America and its history than let the bad times roll scathing critique of pretty much nothing. The song understands that many of America's biggest problems like racism and classism are also embedded into the roots of the entire country. At least that's what I get out of it. On top of that, it's a fireball of an opener, Noodle's licks are great, the words hold a lot of power in this track, and Dexter's performance is savage. Behind Your Walls, Army of One, and Breaking These Bones are pretty decent tracks. Nothing amazing, but they have some energy and are par for the course for a modern offspring. Behind Your Walls is one of my more favorite tracks with some nice hooks. This would be a pretty good pick for the next single in my opinion. An Army of One has some nice surfy and Dead Kennedys-esque guitar riffs, which are a nice change of pace for this band, even though Noodles is no East Bay Ray. Coming For You is obviously on this album, and I know it's technically a different version to the one that came out six years ago, but the last version had Greg K on bass, and this one has Todd Morse. So I guess it's different, I suppose? But I'd be lying to you if I said I could tell the difference. They did a quick cover of In the Hall of the Mountain King, because no one's done that before. But it's fine, I guess, even though I think it's a waste of time, personally. The Opiate Diaries is a great, more traditional offspring track. It's got Noodle's choppy riffs that only he can do so well. The drums are nice and punchy, even though the lyrics make me want to roll my eyes into the back of my head. Like, using the term Big Pharma is something anti-vactors and conspiracy theorists do. I'm not saying there aren't good reasons to criticize the pharmaceutical companies, because God knows there is. 
but this one leaves a bad taste in my mouth despite liking pretty much all of it besides the words. A Sun Shop is one that goes way back in the band's history. Noodle said it was originally written back when they were called Manic Subsidal in the 80s, and it sounds like it. It's very reminiscent of songs like Black Ball, Session, and Beheaded, and if you're reminding me of songs like that, then I'm happy. It's a total highlight, and I love it when this band goes into a balls deep, almost hardcore. And this is one of the most ferocious songs I've heard this band do in years. Okay, time to talk about the Gone Away re-recording. Now, Gone Away is not only my favorite Offspring song, but it's one of my favorite songs of all time. It's a song that never fails to get an emotional response out of me. That melancholic guitar line, the powerful drums, and Dexter's howls encapsulate a sense of longing and sadness. Dexter wrote it after his girlfriend was killed in a car accident, and you can really feel his pain in this track. And it's a song a lot of people can connect with. We've all lost someone we really love and care about at some point in our lives, whether it be a family member, or a friend, or a lover. In fact, I had a family member pass recently, and I can't deny when I went back to listen to the original version of the song to write the script, I thought about them a lot. Make no mistake, this is a song that means a lot to me. So take it from me when I say this. This re-recording is fucking shit. This came about because a few years ago they started to occasionally play this song with just Dexter and a piano live, and I don't mind it as a one and done live thing. Or even if they release a live version or something, I don't really care. But making it a studio version and just calling it Gone Away, not Gone Away 2021 or Gone Away piano version or something, just really pisses me off. First off, the band has said that this is a stripped down version, which I guess is true, but this version has a fucking string section on it. Which I'll admit, it sounds great, but why couldn't this be in a completely new song? Why not let this stand on its own instead of it just attaching to a song people already love? Also, as I mentioned before, Dexter's voice has aged quite a bit since the good old days, and to hear this song sullied with the most obnoxious and obvious pitch correction I've heard in years is insulting. Maybe in another life, I could find you there. Dexter, if you couldn't sing it, why not just change the key to something lower, to make it easier to sing? Or better yet, don't fucking bother if this is the best you can do. This song deserves way better than your pitch-corrected bullshit. Also, I hate the idea that stripping down a song is more real or personal or some shit. All this version does is rob the song of its power. It honestly reminds me of the Five Finger Death Punch cover of this song they did a few years ago. I wish I was kidding. Now, I also hated the Dirty Magic we were recording from Days Go By, but at least the band didn't have the fucking temerity to completely change the structure and do a country version or some shit. And then the album limps along and it ends with a song called Lullaby, which is the definition of pointless. All it is is just Dexter singing lines from the title track with stupid effects all over it and a repetitive guitar line. That's it. It would make more sense to just end it on the Gone Away re-recording, this track serves no purpose. Now granted, that re-recording put me in a bit of a sour mood, so I'm probably being a bit too hard on this track than it's worth. But I don't think anyone's going to say this is their favorite track off this record, that's for sure. So that's Let the Bad Times Roll. I admit, it's a decent record. And even though it kind of offends me in some tracks, I have to be objective about it. There's good cuts to be found, like This Is Not Utopia, Behind Your Walls, and Hassan Chop. But the bad songs are some of their worst. Up there with that Cruising California shit. Remember that song? I sure fucking do. And if you're more forgiving for some of these band's faults, I can see some people really liking this album but I'm unfortunately not one of those people. But that's just my opinion. Tell me what you think below in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to remain notified and to support the channel. But anyways, take it easy party people.